Thanks for the introduction. Good morning, everybody, and um, <clears throat> or good afternoon, I should say. Uh, I appreciate you allowing me into your homes and offices to talk to you. Um, I am a mechanical engineer uh, working for the Power Roof Ventilator Business Unit of GreenHeck. Today, we're going to kind of cover um, a technology that is common in the industry. Now, being a part of GreenHack, I use the words on the screen a lot called very green. Um, please keep in mind that, and we'll hit this right off the bat, but very green, um, that's my trade name, but it, it covers, you know, EC motors and VFDs. And I'll try to be specific so that um, our time today is general to the entire industry, not just GreenHack. Um, and then that's important to me that everybody gets information out of this. We're going to kind of cover some applications. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, a new technology that is available to the industry. Um, of course, I call it very, very green, but uh, that's me. Um, but this, there's a new technology out there, and I want to make sure that everybody sees how that technology plays into the bigger world of um, HVAC. So uh, without further ado, um, we do have an agenda, uh, but I really don't like reading slides to people. So we're just gonna keep moving. I wanna kind of start our time today with a recap of Very Green, okay? And really to start this off, what I need to, to kind of knock out is, you know, what, it, what does Very Green represent? Let's get all on the same page. So whenever you hear myself or a, a green heck rep or um, others calling about very green, really what they're saying is that the product they're dealing with has two um, characteristics. And that's the ability to have variable volume, variable speed built in or, and excuse me, not or, and um, has high efficiency compared to the other products available in the industry. Right. And this, and, um, you know, we're going to really start. Let me try that again. Greenhack about 12 years ago started the very green name to kind of en encompass this family of products that can make a huge difference to our industry. Right. And you know, about 12 years ago now, I should update my slide. We started out with three electronically commutated motors or EC motors, right? And called them very green. And that actually, this is important to see where things started and how long ago, you know, because we started off with, you know, three motor sizes, a quarter horse, a half horse, and a three quarter horse, only in 115 volt single phase. And this started the revolution, right? Um, these motors, are extremely highly efficient. Uh, you know, an, an EC motor in that single phase realm, that motor is you know in right in about eighty five percent efficient. You know, let's let's kind of swallow that a little bit. You know, the common competitor to the EC motor in single phase world are a couple of motor technologies. Um, I'll name a few: shaded pole, um, permanent split capacitance. Those motor designs have the ability to put a rheostat on them, speed them up, slow them down. You get about 30% turn down, um, depending on the size of your wheel, a little bathroom fan with a tiny little wheel, you can get a little bit more turn down. Um, you know, so we're competing against those technologies with this EC motor. And this EC motor has an 80% turn down range in all sizes, right? So you're, you're not being held back by the weight of your impeller. Um, of course, you use the motor technology where it's appropriate, but this huge turndown and that 85% efficient, you know, the shaded pole, yeah, I did a, uh, a study, oh, it's gotta be three years ago now, that looked at common shaded pole um, efficiencies. And what I came up with was a swath between 8% and, you know, about 20% um, kind of hit that range. So we're like comparing, you know, let's call it a 10 or 15% efficient motor, which is the, the most common fractional horsepower motor in the world, comparing it to this EC motor, that's 85% efficient. 
okay, you know, now, you know, I hope I have your attention. There is a huge difference, you know, and, and then you look at the permanent split capacitance I mentioned, or PSC, you know, that motor design, actually a little bit more expensive motor, but an excellent design. And you're, you're sitting in, a, you know, that 50 to 60% efficient range, right? So those are the two main competitors to an EC motor. And we introduced this EC motor because it was heads and tails above those technologies. Um, they, they ran cooler. They had more built-in capability. I'm going to hit that more as we go. Um, but we really started out with just those three horsepowers. And what have we done with ourselves in the last 12 years? What has the industry done in the last 12 years? And that's expand, right? Um, this, this technology is usable. It, it's valuable. So in the last 12 years, I know at my doors, um, we've expanded all the way down to a 115th horsepower very green motor, EC motor. And it's this little adorable motor. Um, and I get excited about it. You know, and we have, you know, one tenth, one eighth, you know, one sixth horse, um, you know, we, you know, one horse, two horsepower, you know, so there are more and more horsepowers, you know, and why do I get excited about the littlest guy on the, on the block here? Well, the reality is 10 years ago, 12 years ago, if you wanted an EC motor, the industry gave you a quarter or half horsepower motor no matter what your brake horsepower was below that, because that was the smallest motor available. So by continuing to invest in this technology and expand its uh, availability to the industry has really allowed us to, to make multiple horsepower motors. And that means that when you're um, specking a fan that has a 0 0.01 horsepower, brake horsepower, that means that I can give you a motor that's sized for that application. You know, so yes, that is exciting. You don't have to pay for a quarter horsepower motor in that application. Now, something else that's uh, changed, you know, when we first released those three um, EC motors, you know, 115 only, and then we started coming out with 208, 230, and 277 volt motors. And that 277 is actually, that's one leg of a 460 volt system to ground right? Um, the, the lighting industry uses that a lot. You know, and we jumped on that as well. Okay, this is allowing us to take a 460 volt system and put single phase motors on them. But there were three different part numbers for every horsepower um, to have that voltage and have it wired up that way. Well, in the last 12 years, by golly, we, we realized that um, when someone was, you know, you know, just dead set that this was a 115 volt available in the building. And then you get there and come to find out it was 208. The only recourse you had was to order a new motor, wait a couple of days, you know, or at least a day, uh, tear a fan apart, put the new motor in so you could accommodate that uh, power. Well, we've gone to multi-voltage motors. So again, we're taking all these different horsepowers and each of them has one um, part number now makes it easier on everybody and you know you have a multi-voltage i know for ours there's a voltage doubler wire and when it's plugged in you're you're set up for 115 volt and when you unplug it 208 to 277 one part number get it on the site get the people installing it on the site and off the site this is you know when you kind of boil everything down, you know, it comes down to the investment of time and money and, and they're kind of the same thing. If we can make things easier to use on the roof, this is assisting every, everybody from the contractors, the engineers, all the way up to me. So that's where our investment has gone of time in development. So all of these EC motors, very green motors are tri-voltage. Uh, selectable in the field and however you order them, that's how they come shipped from the factory wired that way. But in this time, this last decade, we've also seen value to incorporating controls with those motors, especially, you know, design build and whatnot, where you may not have an entire building management system and cover an entire building where a controls contractor is going to grab that entire piece, you know, really you can say, oh, hey, we just got a garage here and, and I need to monitor temperature. Okay, you know, 
So we uh, introduce what we call very green controls. They're just controls that work with these motors. Now from the field came a lot of feedback saying, hey, you know, we like what you're doing, but, and you gotta listen when they say, but, you know, we need, we need three phase, we need bigger, you know, that the one and two horsepower we stopped at was, was not meeting the demands of the industry. And so we actually, a couple, three years ago, introduced a, what we call a very green drive. Now it is a VFD, you know, I call it very green drive. It's a VFD. Um, it's cool. It's in a NEMA 4X enclosure. It's mounted in the fan, wired at the factory, programmed at the factory. Um, so, it, you know, really neat offering allowed us to bring very green's name into the three phase world. And this was half horse to 10 horse capable. All right. Now, this is this recap has been okay the last you know 12 years what have we done with our world the next you know series of slides is all about the newest technology coming out today and how that can impact uh you all so this is what it looks like um again you know we call it a very green motor you know, but you'll notice right off the bat just looking at it you know this is a tefc design um and it's got that drive and enclosure mounted to the top of the motor. So this motor is, we introduced it back in last April, about a year ago now. This motor is available in single and three phase, right? So now we're back to our original offering of EC motor with single phase only. And then if we wanted three phase, we had a very green drive. Okay, and that very green drive was married up to an AC induction three phase motor, which is very efficient by the way in three phase. Now, this motor brings us back to the ability to offer an EC motor that is orderable in single or three phase, okay? This does have a totally enclosed fan-cooled enclosure. Uh, TEFC motors are, are very popular for, for many reasons. Um, whether you're coastal or you have contaminants, uh, it just seals the motor up um, uses that fan for cooling itself. You have less issues with heat. Something else neat about this motor is that it's a standard NEMA frame size. And this is huge, believe it or not, um, because we didn't come out with a new technology that has a custom frame mount and can only be used in this one fan. Um, no, being that it's a NEMA frame size, you can bolt this thing up anywhere that AC induction motor could, could have been bolted. And the, the NEMA frame size defines everything about, you know, the size of the foot pad, where the holes are, the spacing of them, the height to the shaft, the diameter of the shaft, you know, that, that frame sizing defines those characteristics. So now you can use this motor in, in any application where that AC induction motor was used. This is offered in one to 10 horsepower and it does have an integrated drive. Now let's pause there for just a moment. You know, all EC motors have a drive, okay? And this is actually an important thing for the industry to understand. And it has implications as well. You know, even though I have that little 1 15th adorable motor, it still has a drive built into the frame. Now this one, bigger motor, bigger drive, um, can't fit it in the barrel of the motor without stretching the motor way out. So you bolt it to the top of it, uh, but all EC motors have drives. And what this means is, okay, EC motors have variable speed. Perfect. This also means that these EC motors have motor protection built into them. Uh, locked rotor, you know, stall trip, all those common protections that you might be looking at a motor starter to, to get to. No, all EC motors have that built in. Okay. Um, it, some EC motors have a separate drive. I kind of have to give you an asterisk here. Um, the, the drive is physically separate from the motor. I usually consider those to be permanent magnet motors with a drive. And when I say EC motor is when they're integrated to each other. But again, you still have that protection and you also have the soft start capability. Um, that's just standard, right? 
So the integrated drive is a bigger statement and it's more than just the motor on the screen. It's all EC motors have that protection package, that soft start um, startup. But oh, by the way, you know, these motor designs I'm showing you here are IE5 efficient. Okay, um, to give you an idea, the standard for being sold in the US today is uh, an IE3, which is NEMA premium, okay? IE5 is ultra premium. Um, if they ever come up with an IE6, I'm not sure what adjective they're gonna add to the name, but I'm looking forward to finding out. So IE5 is extremely efficient and I have an entire slide coming up on efficiency. So let's just kind of keep moving forward. You know, in that single phase offering, you know, 115 volt, um, 208, 230 for one horse, and you start getting above one horsepower and you need more oomph, right? So, you know, the two and three horsepowers in single phase, 208, 230. Now in the three phase world, one to 10 horsepower, um, 208, 230, and 460. Now, when you get above five horsepower, you drop that low voltage and you're still at that 460 volt for the higher horsepowers. But it's awesome that I can get a NEMA frame, very green motor, all the way upwards of 10 horsepower now. And I can get that three phase, which people have been looking for. Now, again, this is a green heck offering I'm showing you, but keep in mind this offering, this motor is available to the industry. So I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, not a salesman, and I apologize for that <laughs> um, or not. But, you know, I'm just kind of trying to show you how GreenHeck has kept um, their fingers in the industry, what's available, and is making sure that we're offering to our clientele, you all, you know, the, the uh, right technology at, uh, oh, they're at the right cost. So. Let's talk about motor efficiency a little bit. Um, get, we're gonna get in the weeds a little bit and then pop back out, right? So I love this little graph. Um, the orange bars that I'm showing, that's that IE3, that NEMA premium efficiency minimum that is required. And this is where your three phase AC induction motors that you're gonna buy, they're gonna hover right around that requirement mark. Okay, so let's look at two horsepower, 86.5% uh, efficient. That's where you're going to hit. And, and most of your motors are going to be between 86 and a half and 87 and a half, 88 and a half, right in that range. This motor design that I'm showing you is almost 91% efficient. Three phase motors are always more efficient than a single phase motor. Um, you know, you have three pedals instead of one, if you have the bicycle um, analogy on how motors work, right? So they're always going to be more efficient. And because of that, it's really difficult to make gains and step up and become more and more efficient because we're already so high. But going to different technologies and applying those technologies is actually allowing us to do that. Picking up four and five points in the three phase realm is awesome, right? When it comes to efficiency, when it comes to keywords like net zero um, and green and lead, you know, being able to pick up those points is actually, it's hard to do and it's awesome when you can do it. And this motor technology has done it. Uh, I kind of wanted, as long as I'm talking about efficiencies here, I kind of want to throw in an example, right? You know, let's look at you know, a warehouse. And, and I just ran the numbers on this. There's a lot going on in the slide, I apologize. But you know, a five horsepower fan on the top of this warehouse, right? Kind of showing on that graph, that left-hand column, that's, that's that fan is running continuously, constant speed, and away you go, right? And the blue is the uh, v, very green or the EC motor. And that red is just an AC induction motor with a VFD, you know, make sure we're uh, giving you a comparable information. But you can see your cost of operation here, you know, is that, you know, 460 to 490 range, right? And this is how it's been done for the longest time. You, you flip the fan on and it just runs. Well, if we're going to talk about efficiency and the two bars show, okay, this motor is more efficient than the common motor, I can save money monthly. Let's just throw in and go a little bit deeper 
and say, how can I use that variable speed portion of the motor technologies to change my monthly bills? And I show here an on-demand system. You know, that means I'm only running the fans when this building is occupied, when this piece of equipment is running, um, when the temperature is greater than X. So when you go to a demand control, you know, simple controls, turning fans on and off, you know, no matter how efficient the motor is, controlling when the motor runs will save you way more money. So efficiency goes beyond a motor technology, it actually goes into a philosophy of how you're using those motors. And of course, my last uh, graph here, my last columns, is if we truly use a variable volume system where I'm reacting to the conditions inside this warehouse, right? Um, temperature with a PID controller in it. What that means is I'm, I'm using a set point, you know, maintain 85 degrees. Um, and I'm using a PID controller that says, okay, they want 85 degrees. The current temperature is 90, turn fan on, ramp fan up to this speed, bring the temperature down and then adjust the speed as we go. What this allows me to do is not just grab hold of that on-demand scenario, but it allows me to run the fan at 20, 30, 40%. Now, you know, fan laws, I love the fan laws, right? You know, the first fan law says, if you change RPM, you change CFM one to one. That's a great fan law. The second fan law says, you know, if I change my RPM, I change my static pressure by the square. Um, if you need to speed up a motor, this is the one that kind of bites you a little bit. Your static pressure starts jumping up. But that third fan law of horsepower is really the expensive fan law. If I got to turn a fan up, I'm going, I'm changing the horsepower, the brake horsepower by the cube. So I, you know, a simple 10% increase in RPM, 10% increase in CFM results in a 33% increase in brake horsepower. Okay, so that's the downside of this story, but what's the upside? If I can turn a fan down, I get to use that same equation in reverse, right? I get to use a third of my horsepower by turning it down. And if I'm using less horsepower, I am consuming elect less electricity, I can adjust my makeup air and replace less air, there's efficiency. So this one simple, uh, slide really starts talking many stories. And I just had to throw in the fan laws because, well, that's what I do. All right, let's get back on um, these EC motors. So this new motor uh, works with all the other very green controls and common controls in industries. And, and it's also offered with a dial. Um, sometimes you don't want to do a variable speed, that's okay. And you can just set a dial, which makes super easy test adjust balance, right? When you can turn a dial and you're not messing with shivs and pulleys, you're not um, <laughs> not having to put all that time and effort in, you know, you really, you made time and money on the roof getting off the roof, right? But the key here to working with common industry controls is the fact that this motor accepts a zero to 10 volt signal. Now, for very green motors, um, all of our EC motors accept a zero to 10. And that's how I tell the motor when to run and how fast to go. It's a speed reference. And it's, it's a simple, you know, if I send five volts, I'm telling the motor to go 50%. If I send 10 volts, I'm telling it to go 100%. So pretty easy uh, equation on that one, equation of a line. Uh, this motor, uh, it does step up from our typical fractional horsepower very green motors. This one also does accept a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So it's not as common in our industry, but it is, it is there. So being able to do it without swapping motors, a simple change, programming change of the drive, and, and you're up and running. Now that drive on these motors is integrated, but it's replaceable. Um, having a VFD that you can replace and not have to tear out an entire motor if it were to fail, there's a, there's a value there. These drives do have Modbus communications built into them. Um, that's a standard. Um, 
back net's coming. It's not there yet, but it's coming. Uh, motor protection, like I mentioned earlier, um, there is a relay built right into that drive that you can that closes whenever the motor is running or being told to run. And that's excellent if you want to use that as a simple relay to pass power by others through onto your damper actuator. So you tell the motor to run and the motor allows the voltage to go to the damper and have it open. The soft start of the motor means it's a slow rise to speed, allows the damper to open. Again, we're starting to really combine things so you're not having to implement more controls um, kind of on the fly and in the building. You know, these are kind of built in. And oh, by the way, this new motor design is called, uh, it has uh, incorporated into it shaft grounding. There is a, a full boat drive um, in that enclosure. So uh, this motor design has shaft grounding. Now, I kind of want to point out here that since we're talking industry wide, not all EC motors have shaft grounding. Um, like our fractional horsepower motors do not include shaft grounding. But in single phase fractional horsepower motors, um, you know, I, I've got experience with providing over 500,000 of those motors to the industry. I haven't had a problem with shaft grounding ever. So that's a pretty good track record. Uh, but when you start going to three phase and, you know, a, a bigger, more capable drive, shaft grounding becomes more of a concern. You're dealing with higher powers. You're dealing with higher horsepowers. So shaft grounding does become a concern in that area. And it's good to know that like this motor design has it included as a standard. You don't even have to ask for it. So um, kind of jumping in here, let's pull this motor apart so that I don't freak anybody out. They think there's aliens inside of it. It really looks like a normal motor when you pull it apart. apart. It does have a drive that's on the top, um, but it's got a stator winding, you know, uh, you have that rotor right there. And really uh, that's where I wanna pull your attention is the, the, the motor design pulls its name off of that rotor design. That rotor is a ferrite assisted synchronous reluctance rotor or phaser rotor. And that's what makes this motor an electronically commutated uh, motor is that, that type of rotor. Um, that rotor is specifically how this motor achieves that higher efficiency, lower running temperatures, um, variable speed capability, you know, that's a balance between the drive and the, how it uses that rotor. And of course, if you look forward a little bit, there is a shaft grounding brush internal to the motor, not external. Now, I love throwing up wiring diagrams because it scares people. I'm a little vindictive that way. Um, but actually there's a purpose here. I kind of want to circle a couple of parts and, and go a little deeper in discussion. One more dip into the weeds. Stick with me here. You know, the first thing I want to show you is yes, you know, you land your power on the drive, right? Um, if you've ordered this with a, a disconnect, you would bring your power to the disconnect and this would be pre-wired. Um, there are 11 terminals on this drive that you can interact with. There's that status relay, that robust relay. Um, it can handle six amps up to uh, 250 VAC. Um, so it's a robust relay for damper actuation, or you could use it simply to, to report back when the motor's running. You can use it either way. But what I truly want to talk about here is this fuse box right before the drive. And this brings up a topic that I've been talking to engineers about for the last two years. And, and hopefully this actually resonates uh, with you guys. And that's, I've been asked, um, what is this fan's short circuit current rating or SCCR? It, has this been a common thing for you? So short circuit current rating, basically this is a value, a number of amps that anything above that is gonna create a catastrophic failure of the device. That's what the short, pardon me, that's what the short circuit current rating is stating, right? It's been tested and approved up to this value, right? Now, does a motor have an FCCR value? 
It doesn't. Does a fan have an SCCR value? It doesn't. But the SCCR value comes from your branch protection, all right? It comes from that weak link in the power um, that will interact with that short first. In this scenario, uh, imagine a fan on the roof with a disconnect. That disconnect does have a short circuit current rating. A VFD does have a short circuit current rating. So those individual items actually carry that value. And of course, the lowest value of an assembly is your stated value. Now, in this scenario, um, typical industry-wide, right, uh, disconnects have a 5K or 5,000 amp SCCR rating. If it doesn't state otherwise, it's, a, it's an assumed 5K. The information is the same for VFDs. Uh, like the VFD we're looking at today, 5K. And now the big red arrow pointing at the fused disconnect in front of this drive. If you have a spec or a need or a requirement to have a higher SCCR rating than 5K, it is really easy to get to if you know what to ask for. Um, I have seen a lot of specs come across my desk that are asking for 50K or 65K. Those two numbers seem to be the most popular in requirements. Well, I just told you these are five, not gonna meet your needs. If you put a fused disconnect in front of the equipment, that fused disconnect um, actually gives you 100K in this scenario. So there's your, okay, now I meet the requirements simply because I spec'd or ordered a fused disconnect with that piece of equipment. So just kind of want to do a little deep dive um, techie stuff here. I can't help myself. Pop back out, let's look at the drive. This is just a prettier picture of the drive. Um, what we're looking at here is an ABB drive, uh, a 255. Um, there are 11 terminals. I don't wanna bore you by going through every one of them, but I can tell you that this drive creates 24 volts on terminal one, can be used to power your controls, your very green controls. Um, not enough to power a damper. So uh, please don't make that mistake. It's just enough for controls. Um, it's got digital inputs that are programmable. You can do multi-speed with just this one device. Um, it does have the Modbus already built in. Um, this one has an ethernet port. Well, that's not an ethernet port. That's actually an RJ45 connection, but it's, uh, it allows us to use neat little devices like this that you plug into it. That has a Bluetooth radio and there's a free app online <laughs> that you can actually talk to this drive. You can modify parameters such as acceleration and deceleration rate, um, level of protection, you know, trip points, look in at your trip logs. So you can communicate um, these. These are pre-programmed from our factory. It's the way we do it. But we still give you the ability to do troubleshooting or tweaking. You know, maybe you have to do a skip frequency at a, a very specific point for that application you can do that, you're not locked out. And of course that terminal relay, um, it's, it's a normally open relay and it closes upon running condition. Now we talked earlier about these motors running cooler and this is actually true of all EC motors. Uh, EC motors will run cooler than their AC induction counterparts every day of the week. They're more efficient. Part of that higher efficiency means less heat generation. On the left here, I have a traditional three horsepower motor, AC induction. And we can see actually, you know, max temperature is 84.3, actually it's right here, 84.3 degrees Celsius, okay? That's normal. Here is our uh, very green motor, the EC motor, 67.8 Celsius. So running, you know, upwards of 20% cooler than a standard motor. Now, the first thing I ever learned about um, electric motors was that if a motor runs cooler, it runs happier and it runs longer, okay? It's, a, it's just a much happier device. So anytime you can pull heat generation out of a motor, you're going to extend its life for that application. You know, 
Now, we, if we kind of compare this knowledge to, you know, back to that shaded pole and PSC motors I was discussing earlier, if you put a rheostat on those motors to, to get a hold of that variable speed application ability, you have, as a byproduct, create more heat. Uh, a, a typical VFD on a three-phase motor will create more heat. Now, they, they up the insulation in these motors to usually type F for um, B to F, somewhere in there. So they beef the insulation up to handle that higher temperature, but it's still a reality. You are going to increase the temperature of those motors. Here, we have a VFD on an ES, or EC motor, and it runs cooler. And as you turn it down, it continues to run cooler. All right, let's kind of you know look at how these motors can be implemented, right? Um, th there's three topics here I like to hit, and I'm going to hit these quickly. You know, how does this motor add to our industry for performance needs? How does it add to functionality needs? And one quick slide on um, how much is it going to cost me? That's a real concern, folks. First price is kind of a concern. So let's talk about this. I'm using green heck data here um, for you, but you know, your traditional, what I call a legacy EC motor, um, they're direct drive only, typically. They're in single phase only. And, and for me, I'm using an upblast as an example. You can see that I have all these different motors in single phase. And you know, I go from that 115th to one horse, moving, you know, 40 CFM up to almost 4,000 CFM. Well, that's what's been done for over a decade now. Now I did introduce the very green drive, a VFD with a three phase motor shown here. And that brought very green or variable speed, high efficiency into that, you know, 3,600 to 30,000, you know, CFM range, upwards of 10 horsepower, but it was three phase only. So this new motor design, you can pick single phase or three phase, and really covers this entire swath, you know, 400 to that 30,000, right? So you have a, a, a technology that's high efficient and variable speed and can hit, we can set the different motor sizes for the different uh, needs of the industry. Now, one more quick part to this, you know, those single phase ones, a direct drive only shown by a blue bar. Um, here we show that, you know, a VFD with the three phase motor, um, you can use that in direct drive, it's very common. And you can use that on belt drive as well, especially when you get to those higher horsepowers, belt drive becomes much more common and, and necessary. This new motor, direct drive, you know, uh, wherever you can use direct drive, I think it's a great idea. You're not uh, having to worry about, you know, greasing bearings and tightening belts, replacing bearings and belts. I, you know, I don't know about everybody here, but the um, maintenance departments are not typically growing. They're getting smaller these days, especially in schools, uh, military, government, hospitals. You know, they carry a lot of people on staff and, and the maintenance departments aren't always at the top of, of the requirement list. So going to direct drive really reduces your everyday use and input on these fan designs. All right, let's look at functionality quick. Typical EC motor, again, this is industry-wide. Um, dial on board, common, zero to 10. Um, four to 20 is not as common. Available here and there, but not as common. Um, good turn down, that's part of being an EC motor. You know, it's programmed at the factory. Motor protection's built in, this is all good. Um, on the right-hand column, I show you, you know what? You, you tie up a uh, AC induction motor with a VFD, by golly, you have access to everything here. Um, you know, shaft grounding, I put an asterisk on because, well, you wouldn't define the shaft grounding at the drive. You would request the motor to have shaft grounding. And that's an entire conversation of when it's prudent to, to spend the money on shaft grounding. Um, truly, it is an insurance policy. When do you invest in that? When don't you? Um, work with uh, Tracy and Terry if you want more, and Nelson if you want more information on that one. But let's look at this new very green motor I'm showing you today. You know, it's a single phase or three phase and stock has much of the VFDs shown capabilities, um, covers everything that a typical EC motor would as well. 
But like I showed you with that RJ45 port, a simple plug-in of a Bluetooth um, stick, and you have access to that app and programmability. Let's talk one slide on price. Um, if anybody here is a user of eCaps, um, thank you. And it's a great program. I love using it. All the numbers I'm showing you here, just to be transparent, are budget numbers out of eCaps, right? So this is available to you. You don't even have to have an account. You can be a guest. Uh, you can check my work. <laughs> but I show here on the left, uh, and a fan of mine bought uh, with a VF or with an AC induction motor and a field supplied VFD. Someone had to go in, they had to wire it, they had to program it, uh, they had to find a wall to find to put that VFD on. Um, the middle column here, this shows the very green drive. Well, you save a bit because that's located right in the fan, a lot less effort put into it. Still a VFD and a three phase motor. On the right column, this is that new very green motor. And I think I'm using three horsepower as an example here. Um, but let's look at cost. In this scenario, using a very green motor actually saves 28% on first cost, not to mention, you know, that time, material, the labor um, to install a VFD by others. So having that all packaged and supported by one name, whether it's mine or not, I hope it is, you know, 28% gets my attention. All right. This is my one little uh, green heck sales mini slide here specifically. And I'm just showing you models that I have, you know, the, the down blast and up blast models, um, square inline sidewall models. All of these include very green motors, EC motors, right? You can pick them uh, with all those different types of fans. Actually something kind of new um, since probably August of this year, we're offering these EC motors with HPAs and APDs. You know, plenum arrays are incorporating this. So, you know, even GreenHeck with these new technologies being available to us and available to you, we're applying them in places that we have not applied them before. That hooded rooftop unit I'm showing, um, the RCE, RCS, I never offered a very green motor before in that um, product. Well, now I do. So just, you know, as the next year goes by, two years, you're going to see very green EC motors, VFDs uh, being applied to so much more for our products because the industry needs that variable speed, high efficiency, the controllability um, of that, those product lines. Now, anytime you introduce new technology, by golly, you got to create paperwork. Uh, it's important you support all the technologies you use. And this is right on my website. Um, but this is an example of how I personally have shifted um, how I do things. I, I've been creating quick start guides that can ship with fans. And for like this motor design, there are six steps to get that thing up and running. Um, very clear and precise diagrams. You know, if you have a damper, if you have a dial, if you have a zero to 10 from a building management system, where do you drop those wires? A little bit of uh, information, get that person off the roof, off the side of the building, down from the scissor lift. In summary, GreenHack has taken very green, variable speed technologies um, to, to three phase to bigger horsepowers. Uh, that drive is integrated in the motor and replaceable. And by golly, the best part is, is we're allowing, not we as in GreenHack, we as an industry are bringing in products that allow, um, allow uh, installations that might've been constant speed simply due to uh, economic constraints for that building. If you can offer that, variable speed and high efficiency and the, the capabilities of these motors at almost that same price, we're opening up the world to really take advantage of it. And, and this is where the industry is going. All right, I've talked plenty. Uh, I do see that there are some questions on. I'm gonna read through these questions. Uh, we do have 14 minutes left, by golly, I'm only one minute over my goal. 
after I go through these written out questions, if you would like to unmute yourself, you are welcome to. Uh, I'd love to hear your voice. If not, um, go ahead and put questions in that chat box. So uh, my contact information is on the screen. Of course, we have Tracy and Terry and Nelson here. Um, they're great points of contact. Um, ask them questions. You're welcome to ask me questions. This is what I do for a living, so I'm happy to have those conversations. All right. Uh, how soon will BACnet and LawnWorks uh, be available? So BACnet, I'm hoping by the end of the calendar year, but I can hope in one hand and well, you've heard that one before. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the, the year, that is a priority uh, and, and we're, we're working on it. Uh, Lon, uh, how popular is, is LawnWorks in your guys' world? Um, honestly, you are the first person that's asked me about lawn work. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about other um, communications protocols, but that's a first. Um, I'm glad at least I know what it is. <laughs> but uh, that, uh, to, to answer your question, um, oh, that answers it. Um, the, the chat just popped up. The Army uses lawn. You would think me being a 12 year army veteran and combat veteran, I would have known that, but they didn't let me anywhere near their HVAC equipment. They just kept me on a bulldozer. So um, at this time, direct lawn work um, on the drive is not being pursued. There are um, available to the industry um, converters, and I'm probably using the wrong word there, but basically a, a gateway type converter that will change um, your communication languages. So multiple devices of, of different uh, communications can still talk. Uh, when I say variable volume, this is the next question. Uh, when I say variable volume, is that low, medium, high speed? Oh, beautiful question. Um, Cause you can look at what I call a DGE motor. Um, it's a three winding motor and you literally have, you know, wire these up for low, these up for high, these for medium. EC motors are infinitely controllable. Um, typical between 20 and 100% or zero stop. Um, but you can, you can dial that in by a third of an RPM, believe it or not. Um, so I can send, you know, 5.2 volts or 5.21 volts and get very specific. Now I can get more specific with my speed reference than a motor and fan can handle. Um, if you change things by a hundredth of a volt, um, you're not going to notice a difference in air movement. But um, the, the reality there is that it's infinitely variable between those points. So great question. And we have like 10 minutes, folks. So I, I love this part of the conversation. Um, plus, I get to learn a ton from you on what's important in your worlds by the questions you ask. So I do truly encourage you people, um, all of you to, to enter more questions. Am I off, next question that popped up here, am I offering anything in FCUs? Um, and my TLAs are a little off, uh, that's three letter acronyms. Please define FCUs to make sure I don't make a mistake in my statement. Or maybe Tracy can. Fan coil units. Fan coil units. Thank you. Um, you know, if I was in a business unit, um, such as our TAP or uh, DOAS business units, that would have been an easy um, knowledge piece because I, I support Very Green as a job, but. Um, most of the fans that I deal with are exhaust fans. Uh, I don't have a ton of information on fan coil units. Now I do know that those business units within Greenheck are investigating right now. They're, they're literally in testing using the technology I've technologies that I've introduced today. So um, I do not know when they're going to release that. Uh, Greenheck has a great track record of really testing everything on a piece of equipment before we release it to the industry. Um, and, and that's where uh, those departments are right now is testing, making sure that it makes fiscal sense, it makes uh, application sense, 
Um, it fits, doesn't block too much air, all those things, you know, you have proper heat mitigation, um, you're moving air away around the motor, you know, they're in the middle of that testing right now. Another question we have here, uh, with the EC serving as the starter, I like the way you said that, is it subject to NEC requirements for starter access and clearances? Ooh, that's a good question. Now, a starter Im implies more than just motor protection. It, it implies a contactor that's switching high power. Um, this, I don't have an answer that I am really, really knowledgeable and, and, and strict on here with you, but my gut feel, so I'm just qualifying that, this is my gut feel, and I do work with starters a lot, is that no, they are not subject to that same access and clearance because we're not switching high voltage. Um, just all the switching is low voltage. Um, now, kind of to play off your question here, you know, would you put or could you put a starter in front of an EC motor? Well, many times you can. Some starters have their smart starters. Um, I like those, by the way but they'll freak out if you put a variable speed fan with a soft start um, in front of them. So you, you create nuisance stripping and EC motors offer you that control ability and protection built in. So it's nice not to have to have spend time and money getting those and putting them in front of something that already has it. So um, I, I usually like to say that, you know, EC motors, um, well, I like to say that soft starters Motor starters and VFDs are competing technologies and you don't use them together. They compete. Uh, next question that's up. Um, how do we wire or program the drive to respond to duct static pressure? Awesome question. You guys are good. I like this. Um, so how can I have it react to pressure? Now on little motors, um, you can actually use the resistance um, you know, the torque requirements of the system and feed off that. I know that we have bathroom type fans that actually measure its own um, torque requirements and actually speeds up to overcome changes in, in duct static. Now those are on smaller motors and smaller fans. The, inf the technology that I've really shown today, I would do that using controls. Um, now I have a control that's available, I love it. It's, uh, we call it a constant pressure controller. And it, it's really simplistic in design. It is a pressure transducer, which compares two points of pressure. And it's a PID controller that takes your input set point, takes the input from the tr uh, pressure transducer, makes a decision and tells the motor how fast to go. Beautiful thing here is, is you don't need a BMS to do that. It, you can be a standalone device. Also beautiful is that it can report back to a BMS and, and tell it, hey, this is my current speed and this is the current pressure. This is what I'm doing. Now, to be full um, open with you, you know, I could do that exact same scenario of constant pressure or constant CFM. It's the same argument with a couple of probes, a pressure transducer, and just a building management system, a decision making uh, ability. Um, now, mind you, you typically have to uh, pay somebody to program that decision making ability. So it's not as easy as a plug and play like we've created, but it is totally doable. Um, next question. Is that part of the onboard controller? So that's kind of a, a fun conversation. The uh, you can access onboard controls and, and go that route. Um, as of right now, I know we haven't chased that down um, simply because we have another device that does the same thing. Um, and I don't see that on my to-do list anytime soon. Like I know our very green drive that we offer does have an access, accessible PID controller that you can manipulate through the app. Um, but um, I have not put the time into creating that guidance on this new EC motor. In a traditional EC motor, the answer would be no at all because it just reacts to a zero to 10 
or a dial position. Um, that's what it's going to do. Okay, we have another question coming in. This is awesome, folks. The wireless communication capabilities of the motor is very interesting, such as the pluggable Bluetooth dongle, but it may be a security concern if used on government contracts, and you are absolutely correct. I can actually get that same drive and, and EC motor package with built-in Bluetooth. Um, and at some point, don't be surprised if I offer that because I really see the value um, for uh, contractors to be able to just log into the motor immediately. But um, I will always have an offering that has no built-in communications specifically for government applications, military applications, um, data centers are very, very strict. So in this scenario, the, um, and we do a lot of data centers and whatnot, I, I won't mention the names, um, but uh, this meets their requirements for having no uh, radio for communications. Now, the Bluetooth stick can be plugged in and it can be adjusted if necessary. It comes programmed from the factory, so that's rarely needed. Um, so they have the ability to get into the drive and troubleshoot. But as a normal state, it, is, it has a zero activity um, for a radio. So it's a really good point you brought up. And I can tell you in my experience in the, the who we're working with these days, um, this motor has met their requirements. Awesome. We have like two minutes left. Um, Tracy, or I don't know if you have any uh, parting words that you would like to uh, send out there. Yeah, I just uh, <clears throat> again like to thank everybody for you know attending our, our webinars. Um, if you do have any more questions, please reach out, reach out to your um, Holden rep. Um, and then next month, we're again, we're going to be working on um, presenting uh, humidification with Neptronic. Hey, Greg, this is Terry. Yes. It looks like we missed one. When you're talking about the controller for the uh, constant pressure, they had a follow up asking if they need a separate controller. You want for constant. Okay, so, um, and I'm sorry I missed that. So the constant pressure controller for me is a separate piece. Um, it, it's a small, you know, I don't know, it's three by five inch box. That's about three inches tall. Um, it, it, it communicates a zero to 10 volt uh, signal back to the motor. The nice thing here is you can put that control box wherever you want. Um, you know, I like to keep a, a no more than 100 feet of wire from the motor to the controller and 100 feet of um, quarter inch tubing from the controller to where you're probing. But it's pretty easy to get up to two or 300 feet away between the fan and where you're actually probing. Um, but that is a separate uh, controller. Um, I know within our automated selection program, uh, when you anytime you pick what I call very green, um, you actually the one of the first questions that the the software asks you is how do you want to control this very green motor? Uh, and, and that would be you know I want to control it zero to ten by others. I want to control it by a dial on board. One of the drop down options is how I want to control this using a constant pressure controller. And in which case you get the probes, you get the controller, you get the wiring diagram and IOM um, shipped with the fan. Did that answer the question well? 